Back before the eruption, the Bay of Naples offered a restful environment, just as it does now, an ideal playground for the Roman elite and well-to-do. California's Getty Villa is an architectural replica of the Herculaneum estate thought to be the home of Caesar's father-in-law. Kenneth Lapotten is the museum's curator of antiquities. We know the Bay of Naples is where Romans, senators, and later emperors left the city in the heat of the summers to much more pleasant climates in the south. And in a way, I think it was like the Hamptons in the United States. The nearby city of Pompeii and its chilling body casts, death poses, seemingly frozen in time, may haunt the public's mind. But sitting at the base of Vesuvius, the small town of Herculaneum and the lavish estates surrounding it were burned and buried as well. We know the wind was blowing south, so the huge column of volcanic material created an ash cloud which was blown south and the ash gently fell on Pompeii. When that force of the volcano subsided and the ash cloud dropped, a very, very hot, steamy, muddy, volcanic, gassy cloud rolled down the hill at high speed and burnt and buried Herculaneum very differently than Pompeii burning and carbonizing, and thus preserving a lot of the finds. So Herculaneum is smaller than Pompeii, more deeply buried, and better preserved. Largely forgotten, Herculaneum's ruins were first discovered in the mid-18th century under 75 feet of compacted volcanic ash. During the next 300 years, excavations started and stopped. The town still lies mostly underground and undisturbed. One reason why what has been unearthed is incredibly rare and treasured. And so the Getty Villa's 2019 summer exhibit, buried by Vesuvius, includes many priceless items recovered from its ancient prototype, many on loan and transported out of Italy for the first time ever. Statues, frescoes, and a few of those charred and scarred papyrus scrolls, by which the original site is now known, Villa di Papiri. It's a small sample of an extraordinary find a library of some 1,800 relics. There may be more as of yet unexcavated. We understand that when they first hit these papyrus scrolls, they looked like charcoal briquettes. No one knew what they were. And the story goes that one of them was dropped and broke open, and letters were found within Greek writing. And then they were recognized for what they are. But they were carbonized and really frozen, in a sense, by this volcanic debris, so they can't just be easily unrolled. Through the centuries, laborious efforts to unfurl the fragile manuscripts often left scholars an odd collection of puzzle pieces. We could say a jigsaw puzzle in 3D, because uh, many of the fragments are also multi so-called multi-layer fragments. Fabrizio Diazzi leads the Department of Papari at the National Library of Naples, holder of the vast majority of the scrolls. The painstaking work to piece together the pieces brought to light a library largely consisting of poetry and Epicurean philosophy, detailing the virtues of friendship and modest pleasures. Writings never copied by medieval and Muslim scribes, and therefore hidden from scholarly interpretation. E quindi è come se fosse 
appena stata pensata e scritta. It's a primary source. We could say freshly thought. Yeah. This is a unique find. This is the only library we have with its contents from the ancient Greco-Roman world. We have lots of library buildings, but they're empty. They're just standing shelves. The scrolls are immensely valuable in the sense that it's the only library from antiquity that has ever been discovered in place. Uh, all libraries from antiquity have been lost. But in many respects, it's an unreadable library with some 400 to 500 scrolls still sealed shut. Ancient texts and thought lost in plain sight. What's really interesting about Herculaneum is that it brings out your own personal interests and expectations um, because it's mysterious and intriguing and entirely open as to what each one of those individual texts will be. Determined to learn what lies within, it was his earlier work with the En Gedi scroll, which excited those charged with preserving and protecting Herculaneum's heritage and afforded seals a new scholarly partnership. Yes, when I saw this, this clip, I think, let, let's, let's do with our scrolls. And so Seals and his team partnered with the UCLA School of Dentistry to use the powerful and sensitive x-ray equipment on site to scan those three scrolls before installation at the Getty exhibit. <laughs> 